Okay, so this video is going to look at copper, uh, the aqueous copper complex ion. Um, it's going to go through most of the, sort of the details I went through on the previous uh, video that was sort of the, as a general kind of reaction. Obviously, this time specifically to copper, including the like, exact reactions and the colours. And I can't stress that enough. The colours are incredibly important. You need to know states and colours for every complex that is going to be covered. So, without further ado, the the complex we're talking about here is, of course, the copper hexa aqua complex and it's a two plus and obviously we're looking at it in an aqueous term there this is and i've gone for blue here because majority of the copper stuff is blue so this is a blue solution if you're a bit confused think copper sulfate the color of copper sulfate copper two sulfate sh i should add comes from the fact that it is the copper hexa aqua ion there the aqueous the aqueous complex ion and that's where your colors come from it's an octahedral complex as you can see from the six waters that are that are bonded so nice sort of easy stuff and the hydrolysis reactions which is our sort of simple reactions with oh minus and with ammonia um, are both relatively straightforward same as the previous video that i did and i don't know if you've watched that or not but if you haven't then you should watch it because it's amazing it's the greatest video you'll ever watch in your life but the copper hex aqua comes along like this two plus ion it's aqueous we react it with the hydroxide or with the ammonia i want to do it like this because basically it's a little bit easier for me to sort of just show you the fact that it is that basically it's the same reaction um give or take uh, a reactant and a product um we're going to find because it's the two plus we're going to end up with the h2o four OH2 and then we're going to get the oh, don't need that bracket actually sorry because we've got no charge there at all we'll stick in some state symbols here because it's just good to have them this is a solid uh, and we're going to have H2O produced there balancing it up we're going to have two and we're going to produce two of those also have two of those just going to produce two of those the key thing this and this remain the same you just swap in ammonia and ammonium in place of the hydroxide and the water. Really simple. Uh, color wise, we're starting, as I said previously, with a blue solution. That's my abbreviation. And we end up with here a nice blue precipitate. This is a really good one, this one, for actually doing yourself. So at school or at home, wherever you are, if you get hold of this and teach, I might show you. It's a really easy one to see. You add the blue, you add the hydroxide or the ammonia, and you get that uh, really obvious sort of blue precipitate. It's really kind of strange, cloudy, almost a bit fluffy in appearance. Second, the hydroxide touches the the aqueous complex of the copper sulfate. Um, you get that pr pr uh, precipitate being formed, and obviously you can't really see the ammonia. We probably could test for the ammonium being there, I suppose, and you've got the water there as well. So it's really sort of straightforward here. You could do this in theory step by step. The fact that one removal of the H uh, the H plus ion here with the ammonia or with the hydroxide ion producing the H2O 5 OH but it's it's just a waste of time really this is the overall equation nice and easy nothing nothing to worry about there that's essentially the hydrolysis part done there is a little bit of an excess one to look at um, there's no excess reaction with hydroxide ions there if you continue to add hydroxide ions nothing will happen you'll have blue precipitate it will not change at all however excess ammonia um, does cause a second reaction to take place. So excess ammonia will cause a second reaction to take place, a di different reaction to the first, although it's fairly sort of fairly similar. So this you can write in two ways. I'm going to write it as an overall to start with. And this is my overall reaction, which is starting with the copper hexa aqua two plux, two plux, two plus complex. And I'm going to react that with, oh, let's try four ammonias. And my complex that's going to be formed. And this is a partial ligand substitution going on here. And this is NH34, H2O2. Still an octahedral shape. And still a 2 plus ion. Because the charges here do not cancel anything out. And then finally, we're going to have four... H2O's, of course, being liquid. That's the overall reaction. When I say overall, that's starting at 
the hex aqua complex and going right through. However, hex boards and AQA being as sneaky as they are, they tend to like not starting here and they tend to like you starting here and they'll do it as some sort of reaction scheme and I'll show you that in the exam question I'm going to come on to. Um, and it's very important to appreciate what they are asking you in the question as to what equation you will need to write. And you are expected to know these equations and the colours associated with them. Now, in this case here, this overall reaction would be blue solution. And this thing over here, because it's charged, it's not going to be a precipitate. It's going to be a solution as well. And it's a deep, and if you see this, it is actually... Uh, quite amazing. It's a really, this is very sort of pale blue, kind of almost power aid sort of colour, maybe a little bit less bright. This is really deep sort of royal blue solution that's formed. It's a really, really nice colour. But the reaction you're most likely going to be required to do is this one where you're starting, as in you've just added some ammonia, and then you continue to add more as, as into excess, so they would get you to write two equations, some for the first bit, which is this adds some ammonia and then add the excess would be going from here to there. So we know we've got to start over here with the CuH2O4OH2 solid. And we're of course adding ammonia to it. We know we're forming this here, which is the NH34H2O2 charged, may I add. Now if you look at this side, there's no charge involved, so we have to have charge on this side to cancel it. Now, if you look at what's happening, we've obviously taken away with substitution reaction, this bear in mind, it's a substitution reaction, so we've substituted out our OH minus, all two of them. Boop, there they go. And it's a bit sloppy me this, fill these in. And of course, we've got our two waters to, to chop off as well. And then we'll balance up on the left-hand side the fact that we need four ammonia in there. So it's not a million miles away from this equation, but the fact that we've got these three products rather than the two. This is the reaction you're most likely to come across in terms of states, colours, blue precipitate starting point, and this lovely, lovely, beautiful. Oh, looks like I've got two E's. That's not two E's. It's not that blue. It's like blue, blue solution. Um, two H minus to H2O. But as I said, bear in mind the type of the question. What I'll show you later on is uh, going to work on this particular instance here, and I'll, but I'll come on to that in a bit. The other one to add here is there is a reaction that goes on with uh, chloride ions, which is again a substitution reaction. Um, and that would be something like uh, this guy here. So this isn't NH3 here. This is with... Uh, chloride ion, particularly concentrated HCl would be, I mean, it's got to be concentrated, if it's not concentrated, I've tried this, it just doesn't work, whether it's to do with the concentration of the chloride ions present, it needs to be concentrated for this to actually work, but you get a beautiful, beautiful colour change. Um, so we add these chloride ions in, go across to there, and what we end up here is, we end up with this CuCl4, it is a complex, and this one has a 2 minus charge, aqueous, 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 and 6H2O, 4 over there. Colour-wise, blue solution, and this here is a lovely green solution. It's incredibly, incredibly kind of bright. It's almost like an emerald green. It's a really, really lovely colour. Um, just check this is all right. Are we okay there? Yeah, 2 plus, 2 minus overall, 2 minus, good. That's another one to bear in mind here uh, in terms of the actual colours. Again, quite a sort of a niche one that doesn't really relate to any of the other sort of reactions, but one to be aware of, certainly. And then very finally, hopefully I've got enough room here, very finally our reaction with some sort of carbonate, sodium carbonate, something like that. Obviously, remember in an exam, if you're asked for particular... Um, hold on, I'm tied up in my microphone here. Oh, no, I've got, there we go. If you're asked for what you would react, it's got to be sodium carbonate or potassium carbonate. It can't just be carbonate ions. The reagent that you always add to something needs to be a proper, uh, proper compound that you can actually add. So not just the ions, but this is an ionic equation that we are writing, so it's fine. Now, in the case of 
this thing here. 2 plus means the copper ion hasn't got that high charge to size ratio, therefore it does not act um, as much of an acid. Therefore we end up with that much more simple, much more easy to, uh, to answer. Delightful substitution, really displacement going on where we just end up with CuCO3 solid and 6 H2O and that should all be balanced up nicely I believe it is yes yes colors wise I'm getting bored of writing this one now blue solution and this one here is a uh, green blue precipitate if you've ever seen copper <laughs> copper carbonate it's a real it's very strange solid actually um, kind of looks a little bit almost moves a bit like water very fine often um, but a really nice sort of greeny blue a bit more green than it is blue but a uh, nice greeny blue precipitate uh, would be formed in this particular reaction so there you have it this is essentially that's all you need to know about copper it's a very very small amount really um, make sure you know it make sure you know all of the equations make sure you know all of the colors uh, get yourself on that make sure you are absolutely certain of all of those things. If I've made mistakes, sorry, but I don't think I have. I think this one's pretty, pretty clean. Uh, I'm going to go and show you an exam question. So, as if by magic, here is my question. Da da. Um, I think this is from June 2002. It's an it's an old Chem 5 paper, but the stuff's still good, and it's all based around this. Again, you can see them right in the middle here. The copper. Uh, hex acron. You can see various bits here. And this tends to be the kind of way these questions work. Some sort of reaction scheme, which I love it. I love these things. Um, starts with that, and it shows you basically all the reactions coming off here, and it will get you to identify basically the ions that are there. So the second you start seeing this, you know, think to yourself, right, what could Z be? What could W be X and Y? Get prepared for the kind of questions. What they're going to ask here about scrap iron, copper. Go down, and we've got here identify ion W. Right, well W is this one here. That's one of the ones I've just did at the end there. So ion. W is going to be made from the addition of the chloride ions. Ion W is going to be CuCl4, but you've got to stick in the correct uh, obviously charges. So CuCl4 2 minus appearance is going to be a delightful green solution. And my equation is going to be where I'm starting with it, which is going to be the CuH2O6. 2 plus, add to that 4 chloride ions, and that's going to take us to the CuCl4, 2 minus, and then 6 H2O. A state symbol is normally not, in, not required with these, but if you want to stick them in, we've got aqueous, 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 add liquid. So, three relatively easy marks there, but you just need to know all that information, all, you know, just off the top of your head really, really quickly. Okay, 5B, identify compound X. Okay, so X describes its appearance again, right in the equation for its formation. So, we're adding this time dilute NH3, and you can see there the next one, as I mentioned earlier on. So, we're adding NH3, so the compound is going to be... Oh, CuH2O4, OH2, no charge there, no square brackets required. Appearance, this guy is a blue precipitate, and it's going to be an equation-wise exactly like I wrote previously on uh, my big canvas thing. Reacting this time, make sure it's the ammonia you add in. It's going to be two, I know it's going to be two. Uh, and we're going to produce, obviously, the CuH2O4OH2 plus 2NH4+. Plus. Nice and simple. Make sure everything there balances and all the rest of your charges. Oh, no. Make sure your charges and all that are correct on the... That's a 2, by the way. Make sure your charges are correct on the complexes. Everything's there. Good. Now, next one is identify ion Y. Now note here, we're looking at X going through to Y. So we're not starting here, we're going from X to Y. Now Y is that lovely partially substituted uh, guy, so it's going to be NH3 4 and it's going to be the H2O2 2 plus remains the start to charge there. This is that lovely deep blue or dark blue solution. Now equation wise it has to be that starting point of the H2O4 
OH2. Add ammonia. I'm going to add 4. I know that. Uh, and I'm going to Cu NH3 4. Oh no. H2O. That was a terrible mistake. I don't know what I'm doing here. What am I doing? It's all going wrong. Add 2. OH minus a 2H2O. There we go. Everything should be balanced. No charge on this side. Charge just cancel on that side. Coppers. Yada 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 yada. Lovely. Everyone's having a great time. <laughs> Again, you've just got to know it. There's no getting away on this. Uh, getting away. Getting, I can't, can't say, say it right in a second. There's no getting away from just learning uh, all this stuff. Final one here in terms of our unknowns, our letters is going to be the reaction of the sodium carbonate. As I said, you know, they're giving you an actual reagent to produce Z. Ah, oh, compound Z is going to be the reaction of the carbonate. It's going to produce you COC3, which is a green blue precipitate. They also allow a green solid in this particular one here. Um, the reaction CuH2O6 2 plus CO3 2 minus. Remember that direct substitution displacement going on. And oh, should we have six H2Os there just for good for measure? Balances, lovely job, having a great time there. Moving down, 5E. Okay, copper metal. This is a bit of a bit of a sort of a, I guess a little bit different, I suppose, in the. I haven't going to cover the idea of copper extraction at all. I'm not entirely convinced. Can't remember whether in the old specification this was something that was specified or not. But anyway, so it's basically you're extracting scrap iron, copper, sorry, using scrap iron from here as a kind of displacement reaction, really. So, equation for that happening, an initial colour and a final colour. Now, if it was me, I'd simplify this down, and this is almost something you could do at GCSE, really, in that you have the copper, add iron, goes to copper, add iron. So you end up with copper ions becoming copper metal, you end up with iron becoming iron, it's iron metal, becoming iron ions. In terms of what's going on here, this is a classic, classic redox. Reduction going on there, oxidation going on there, down to the fact that the the iron is more reactive than, than the copper. And you could look at it in terms of electropotentials and all sorts of stuff. Initial colour is going to be blue, and they all tell you are going to be solutions. Finally going to end up with green, and that's green is based on the fact that it's Fe2+, plus, which... If you've done all of these um, aqueous ions, you should be sort of happy with the effect the Fe H two O six two plus complex is a is a green chap. Three marks there, a little bit out there, but actually not too bad at all, really. Uh, finally, I like this uh, metal extraction isn't covered anymore, but I kind of like the idea of what's going on here. Maybe they wouldn't ask you it, but uh, anyway, copper extraction uses scrap iron. Give two other reasons why this method of copper extraction is more important really than reduction of copper oxide by carbon. Well. Back in the old days, if you're using copper oxide and you're using carbon, you've got to put loads of heat in, so therefore less energy would be used using scrap iron one. And also the old method involved um, carbon dioxide being produced, which is obviously not great for climate change and all the rest of it. So less energy used, less carbon dioxide produced. I'm not entirely convinced that kind of question would ever come up again. This one, maybe. Rest of them, absolutely certainly. Um... There you go, I'll leave that on this beautiful screen there. Make sure you know all those equations, make sure you know your colours, uh, no excuses. Hope that's been of some help. As usual, any problems, uh, get at me on Twitter, it's probably easier than the comments down there, but people soon ignore that anyway and stick them in the comments. I may get back to you, I may not do. Twitter's a little bit easier to use for me because I'm old. But anyway, I um, hope that's been of some help. Um, and there you go, copper, the aqueous ion.